today. Dr. Oz reports why America's kids are fat. Number one most important bit of advice I can give you. Go inside the school cafeteria and see what they really eat. I don't know how to stop. What you can begin to do now. Step number one, look up here. How to pack a low-cal lunch your kids are going to like. Hot quiz, what's healthier? French fries or tater tot? Regular bacon or turkey bacon? Isn't that a shock rooney The hidden truth about fast food. You're going to learn a lot. I sure did. What? Vital information for your family. Next. Be honest. When you see an obese teenager, do you stare? Do you, do you make judgments about their parents? Have you ever really thought about what got them there in the first place? Well, it's not just about eating too much junk. Here's some of what we uncovered with a brave group of overweight teens. Hello. Welcome. Come on in. Have a seat anywhere. 16 overweight teens from across the country came to Harpo Studios to participate in a groundbreaking intervention. 385 pounds. It's just hard to tell anybody my weight. I hate being different. I hate being bigger than everybody else. For eight hours, with the help of counseling team Rich and Yvonne Dutra St. John, they opened up. People make fun of me when they don't know who I really am inside. They broke down. <laughs> they let it all out. No! If <laughs> you really knew me, you know that I hate myself and everything about me. If you really knew me, you know, as a kid, I've got my fair share of beatings from both my parents. When I'm sad, I'll eat. And I think I've been sad most of my life because I'm being big most of my life. Rich and Yvonne pushed these teens to tell their truth. I'm angry that. I'm angry that I had to have my dad's cousin make my prom dress. I'm angry that I had to ask someone to prom. I'm angry. <laughs> Because you think this is your fault. This is not your fault. I'm angry that I get made fun of at school and get called a hippo. <laughs> I'm angry that I'd rather be dead than be overweight. <laughs> the goal of the workshop was to help the teens understand their issue isn't just about weight. It's about figuring out what they're really hungry for. And what is the answer, Christian? I'm hungry for a male figure, a stable. No figure. Josh? Just acceptance, knowing that I've done a good job over something. So validation? Validation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is looking for the same thing. What everybody wants is to know, do you see me? Our teens are back. Dr. Oz is also here. So how's everybody doing? Good. Good. Really decent. Good. Good. <laughs> Moving forward, feels familiar being in these studios now. Josh, I know you were worried that uh, your parents might be angry because you were so candid and honest about, you know, being beaten and having so much sadness. Yeah, I didn't know how my dad was going to take it because he hides his emotions well enough where we don't know what he's feeling. Yeah. And on the plane ride home and back to, to our house, you know, I was afraid, is he going to yell at me? Is he going to hit me or what? So you know, I just had to be quiet and not make it mad or anything. And so what did happen? Nothing, just. When you got home, did anybody talk about everything that had been um, disclosed? Uh, me and my dad didn't, but my mom did, me and my mom. Mm -hmm. But it's normal with me and my dad that we don't talk like that. No, so for all of you, anybody who wants to speak up can. Um, since we did that show, Jillian, for you, wh what has changed since that session? Um, well, at first, it was really awkward for me personally to, like, even be in a room with my dad because we never talk about anything. But after we both just got over it, we started talking more. And, like, I'll come home from school and I'll talk to him about my day. And it's just really nice to be able to go home and know that I can talk to my parents without feeling uncomfortable or knowing that they're upset because of something that happened. OK. Well, Dr. Oz wanted to get a sense of how the fat is affecting our teens' health. So Dr. Oz had them all take, a, take the same blood test that we did last year, right? We did. It's called a biophysical test. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's 250 
uh, samples that we look at in the blood uh, to tell us how your organs are functioning and give us a pretty good idea of what's going on throughout the body. And the reason it's such a, a cool test is because it tells us uh, in a very comprehensive way what effect the fat is having on you. And just to be clear, you're not alone, right? One in six kids is overweight. It's three times more than when, I, when I, we were kids. Uh, and we, we know that, that that rate is going to predict that 80% of you are going to become heavy when you're adult. So what we're seeing today... 80%? 80% of kids who are heavy uh, will become uh, heavy adults. Okay, so what did their tests reveal? Well, a stunningly uh, high number of kids who have inflammation. That means you've got irritation going on in your body, and that's because that belly fat in particular, the omentum, yeah. is like a raging fireball in there. And it's just sending out signals to all over the body, which irritates the body. But I'll tell you what I found that was even more stunning. I could have predicted that you'd have a lot of inflammation, irritation in the body, that you'd be rusting out from the inside. But I didn't know that the boys would start looking like girls hormonally, and the girls would start looking like boys hormonally. And what that means is you're going to have trouble with fertility uh, and, and sexuality. And when you've got a lot of fat on you, the fat comes alive. It becomes another organ. And that organ takes estrogen, for example, uh, and manipulates it so that you get more problems with resistance to insulin. But it takes, in the boys, their testosterone, which they're making normally, and it converts it to estrogen. Wow. In young teenage girls, what it creates is insulin resistance. So the insulin in your body has to go higher and higher. We actually measured that. Uh -huh. so two of you are diabetics, right? And, and, and one more person is a pre-diabetic. And when we realize that, Josh, is a pre-diabetic, and that is an observation, by the way, which just, again, tells us that your body is resistant to insulin. And so you've got sugar molecules. They're like, they're like broken glass shards. They're, they're scraping the walls of your arteries. And then your body has to repair that all the time. And after a while, it can't keep up. It starts to lay down scar tissue, and that's what gives you a hardening of the arteries, the rusting of the tubes we talk about so frequently. Okay, so I know these test results are not easy to hear, but this is really real, and the reason we're doing it is because they all wanted us to. And the test revealed that Josh, uh, Lauren, Jillian, and Caitlin have fatty liver syndrome. So Caitlin is just 11 years old. Caitlin, raise your hand right there. So what is fatty liver syndrome? Well, that belly fat sends chemicals up to the liver, which makes the liver irritated. But in addition, the food that you're eating, if there's too much of it, goes up to the liver. And the liver's main job is to process whatever you put in your mouth and make it what you can use and send it out to the body. But if you overwhelm it, especially with simple carbohydrates like sugars, then the liver stores it as fat in the liver. And that can actually cause hepatitis and inflammation of the liver. These are problems that begin to show us that your internal organs are changing. Okay, and this is why, when we've said this several times on our show, Dr. Oz, you know, first said this, I think, two years ago, this is why this generation of young people, not you all specifically, but this generation of young people who are obese are not expected to live as long as their parents did. Tragically, it violates the basic human desire for us to have our kids live longer. And we've created an environment. I'm not, I'm not gonna let you off the hook, because part of it's things we gotta deal with you, the real hunger that Oprah mentioned earlier. But we've created an environment that makes it really easy to get heavy. Oprah, I'm operating on 25-year-olds. Can you imagine what that's like? Wow. I trained to operate on older people, like people who had retired, and now their hearts had gone bad. I'm doing those same bypass operations on 25-year-olds who made one too many mistakes when they were your age. Okay, half of our teens have uh, metabolic syndrome. Uh, what is that? Well, metabolic syndrome puts it all together. And let me get this real quickly. The belly fat does three things. It squeezes your kidneys, raises your blood pressure. Number two, it poisons the liver. Okay, because before we've said that's the worst place to carry the fat is in your belly. The worst place. Yeah. And the reason it's the worst place is because it causes this metabolic syndrome, which is high blood pressure from the kidneys being squeezed, high bad cholesterol and low good cholesterol because of the liver being poisoned by that same belly fat. And finally, that belly fat blocks insulin. And without insulin to take care of the sugar in your body, you become a diabetic. Okay, so losing just 10 pounds, you say, would have a profound effect on everybody here. The nice thing about weight loss is as soon as the body sees that you're headed in the right direction, the hormones shift. And once those hormones shift, then it becomes like a cycle. The opposite's true too, by the way. As soon as you start putting weight on, everything starts going the wrong way as well. So it's a multiplier. Yeah, I know. This is scary stuff, right? Yeah. It's scary <laughs> stuff because, I know, two weeks ago, they were just worried about fitting in with their friends and wearing the right kind of clothes and all of that. It really is a multi-health issue. And I know it's something you think about all the time, right, Josh? Yeah. I've always wondered, uh, what if I die in my sleep, you know? 
what can I do to help that? The fact of the matter is that's a pretty good odd for you if you don't deal with this. And again, I don't want to scare you guys. You guys know this stuff already. But when you have extra fat around the neck, especially when you fall asleep, it collapses on your throat. It begins to suffocate you. Anyone with a neck size who's a male, 17 inches, and for the females, 16 inches by the time you're full grown, is going to have sleep apnea probably. And it's like a series of, of railroad collisions all night long and causes heart problems and the like. But these are areas, Oprah, with that 10 pounds I mentioned, just the beginning immediately starts to change because you start losing it from your neck and it quickly opens up that space. And these are problems that we can address together. So when we come back, Dr. Oz picks apart their diets. I'm sure it looks a lot like what your kids are eating. And later, how the whole family can make healthier food choices. And we're not just talking carrot sticks, people, because we don't all want to eat carrot sticks. We'll be right back. Childhood obesity has tripled in the past 40 years, becoming the number one health concern of kids in America. Recently, we met 16 overweight teens who took part in a powerful eight-hour intervention. They realize food is not the reason for their hunger, but the drug they use to numb out their pain. Dr. Oz says their poor food choices are killing them. We gave our teens cameras and asked them to show us what's on their plate. This morning, I'm eating some Reese Puffs cereal. I'll usually have about two or three bowls of cereal, which is probably close to 480 calories. I don't think that's too bad. This is what I'm having for dinner. It's two slices of pizza and two cheese sticks and milk, a pizza, pepperoni, sausage and ham on it. I see potato chips, milk, nice little salad, and two turkey and ham cheese sandwiches. Now, Josh, will this be enough for you to eat today for lunch? Are you going to have to have some more or to feel full? or Probably another sandwich. Probably another sandwich? Yeah. These are the tacos we made for dinner. Josh, how many did you make, bud? One, two, five, six. 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 Now, is that going to be plenty for tonight? You're going to eat more? I'm going to eat, like, two more. Is that normal for you? Yeah. I ate lunch. And then we ate two curly dogs for dinner, and that's all. So basically why I think that I eat is because I'm stressed out, or I'm depressed, or sad. It's been my comfort for so long, I don't know how to stop. But I want to. I want to make the change for me. Nobody else. For me. Well, that's all. You say that, Stephanie, because you've tried to do it for other people before? Yeah. Yeah. For my mom to make her happy. Mm -hmm. For my grandma to make her happy so she'll stop making comments. Mm -hmm. For everyone at school so they'll stop making fun of me. I've never really tried for myself. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to that, Dr. Oz? Well, a lot of calories, but they're not a lot of nutrients. Yeah. And you know, when your brain doesn't get the nutrients that it wants, because it can tell the difference between calories and nutrients, then it says, hey, guys, feed me. I want, I want what I want. And so you're going to keep eating more food until you get the nutrients that your body desires. I also saw a lot of very big misperceptions about what you're actually eating. Actually, you know what? Here, I got a food label. Can I show you how to read a food label? Yeah, sure. I think please. this might be helpful. So this is what a food label looks like. And everyone looks at this thing on the side of a box of cereal or anything else you're buying, and they think this is like being in an airplane cockpit. I can't figure this out. It's very simple. Step number one, look up here. Do not go for the head fake. Repeat, do not go for the head fake. This box of macaroni and cheese has two servings in it. So you eat that box, you got to double all these numbers. So right off the bat, recognize that. In general, the things at the top part of the nutritional facts are bad. You want less of these, right? saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, and the things at the bottom, the vitamins, are good. You want more of those. And if you think about it in that way, then you can sort of break it down, good versus bad. The last thing I'm going to emphasize is this column. This little red column here, that tells you what percentage of what you're supposed to get that day is actually in the box. And if you've got more than 20% of something, like in this case, sodium, that means that you have already eaten one-fifth of what you're allowed for the whole day, just in that one little box. 
All right, now, last thing I want to show up. Let's blow this up. Down here, they actually give you crypt notes. They tell you exactly what's in the, what's, what you want to get. So in a day, you want to have less than, for example, 20 grams of saturated fat, and you, you want to get at least 25 grams of fiber. All these are written on the packages so you can get those. So, Josh, let me start with yours. All right? Let's look at the, at the food label for what you're eating. You up for it? Yeah. All right. So you said, was it, was it over 480 calories? That's what he said. All right. So uh, this is what's in that cereal. So let's start up again. How many servings per container? Three, four, or 12 servings. 12 servings. And look at the size, 3 quarters of a cup. Okay. Now come on up here. I want you doing this, because this is how you learn this stuff. It's, it's, and it's straight up. All right, so you see over here, you got 12 servings per container, right? Uh -huh. Three quarters of a cup. Yeah. And, and then how many calories do you have total? 120. 120 calories right there, OK? And then you've got, in, in the same thing, you've got a fair amount of sugar. You've got 12 grams of sugar, right? Yeah. You see it there. All right, mm -hmm. so let me walk you over here. So I'm, I'm going to give you some healthy options in a second, because it's all about choice. But three quarters of a cup, you know how big that is? This is a full cup. It's probably about here. Yeah, that's a, that's like, this is a full cup, everybody, right? So three quarters of a cup, sort of like that. Is that how much you have for cereal? No. No, you don't think, I mean, <laughs> that looks a little different from what you're having, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, I think you're sort of having more like, uh, I don't know, does that look about right in like two or three? Yeah. Does that look pretty good? Mm -hmm. All right, now, if you have three bowls of those, is that about what you get? Yeah. All right, so let's go back over here now, now that we got all that straight. So, Remember, 700, uh, 120 calories, but you're having about six servings. Yeah. So you're having 720 calories. Oh. All right. And then sugar is 12 grams. So 12 times six is math test. Come on. <laughs> 72. 72. I'm not so good at it either. All right. So 70, 72 grams of sugar and 720 calories. You just ate a little bit more than a third of what you're allowed to eat for the day. You don't want to have more than you know, four to five grams of sugar per serving. Because by the time you're done having three or four servings, you've gotten as much sugar as you need. Plus, remember, sugar, they're empty calories. Sugar creates hunger in you. You get the, the, the sugar without nutrients, so your body's hungry for more. So some healthy options. So yeah, Cheerios, same company, by the way, makes Cheerios, Rice Checks. These are all perfectly good options. Now, these companies, you know, they're only making this stuff because you're buying it. If you buy the healthier options, they'll make more of the healthier options. And we don't remember in America, we don't, right here, our pocketbook is, is the ultimate veto boat. We don't buy the stuff, they won't make it anymore. Fair enough? Yep. All right, Josh. OK. Which is healthier, regular bacon or turkey bacon? That answer and other smarter choices for every meal when we come back. Rule number one when it comes to losing weight, never skip breakfast your children will be 30% less likely to be overweight or obese if they start the day off with a good meal. I skipped breakfast at home, so I just purchased the chocolate milk. I normally eat some noodles for breakfast, lunch, whatever. I ate the pie this morning for breakfast. It was kind of like a social eating. Because my friend wanted to eat it, so I ate it. You had ice cream already this morning. For breakfast. I'm with dinner. And two hot dogs. I only had one. Daddy said you had two. What? Mm -hmm. What are you worried about, everybody? You had a bowl of cereal, one hot dog, and two. I only had one dog. Two donuts. I don't have one. Well, the donuts missing out of there. What do you usually have for breakfast? Would you turn off the camera? Why don't you want the video on? Are you afraid somebody's going to find out what you eat? So was that you, Haven? Yes. What's it like to see that? It makes me mad that, um, that I did that. Mm -hmm. I'm lying about what I eat and stuff. Yeah. Because it really was two donuts? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> it's OK. David Zinzinko is the editor-in-chief of Men's Health magazine and author of Eat This, Not That for Kids. In his book, he compares food choices for every meal and tells you which one is healthier and why to start to get your family healthier. So to get our teens and the audience involved, we decided to make a quiz out of David's book, Eat This, Not That. Everyone, pick up your uh, Paget Communication uh, gadgets and get ready to vote. I'm going to do it, too. OK? 
<laughs> Here we go. Everybody have theirs? So, okay. First, which do you think is healthier, eggs and bacon or frozen French toast sticks? Push A for eggs and bacon or B for French toast sticks? Okay, 84% said egg and bacon, and 16% said French toast sticks. Excellent. The answer is A. It's the eggs and bacon. It's 250 calories versus the French toast sticks, which are 450 calories. Eggs are the magic bullet of weight loss, Oprah. If you, studies show that if you start your morning with a high quality protein source, yeah. you're gonna burn 65% more calories throughout the day. Uh, so you don't want to have more than one or two eggs, right. but this is a great way to, to start your day. People who skip breakfast altogether are 450% uh, more likely to become overweight. So eggs and bacon. Yeah. Okay, next. Which is healthier? Oscar Mayer, regular bacon, push A, or Oscar Mayer, turkey bacon, push B. Go ahead and vote. Which one is healthier? The results are regular bacon, 26%, turkey bacon, 74%. The correct answer is A. It's the regular <laughs> bacon. <laughs> Isn't that a shock a -rooney? <laughs> What? I didn't even vote because yesterday they told me the answer and I thought it'd be unfair for me to vote today, but I was totally shocked since I've been eating turkey bacon now for the past 10 years. And so tell us why. Why are you turning a turkey into a pig? I mean, the thing here is they're both, they're both 70 calories. They're both six grams of fat, but you're getting 25% more sodium with the turkey bacon. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a big issue because uh, you want to keep your in-house cardiologist happy. <laughs> In a day, you should get 2,300 milligrams of sodium. That is one teaspoon of salt. Wow. So you want to try to cut it out wherever you can. In this case, you know, it's 360 milligrams of sodium versus two. Wait a minute, they're the same amount of calories? Same amount of, same amount of calories, fat, fat, but there's more sodium in, in the turkey bacon. Shocked, I am. <laughs> All these years. Okay. I know many teens go through uh, drive throughs on the way to school or after school. So let's go, uh, let's do this. Dunkin' Donuts, which is healthier? A, their multi-grain bagel with low-fat cream cheese, or B, a glazed donut. Multi-grain bagel with low-fat cream cheese or glazed donut. Results? Multi-grain bagel with low-fat cream cheese wins in this audience. The true answer is? Is B. It is B. <laughs> the correct answer is B. The now, the correct answer is B, it is a glazed donut. That doesn't mean go have 12. Because exactly. that's what people will then say, well, they said on the Oprah show the glazed donut was healthier. Yes. So, so let's so have Stephanie, a box. Stephanie, come on, I know yes. you, uh, you've had some for breakfast. But the glazed donut is 180 calories. The multigrain bagel is 500. The problem there is that you, we, get, we get seduced by these head fakes, these buzzwords. Things like multi-grain bagel. That only means that there are different grains used. They may still be refined grains. So whole grain is much better. It should say multi-whole grain bagel. And that's the That's the word there. we're looking for, right? That's the word we're because looking for. Because hasn't multi-grain become the catchphrase that no carbs were several years ago? Exactly. And what you have here is a, a, a refined carb-filled bagel, there's a reason it's shaped like a spare tire, because if you have too many, you might end up with one, and it's, the, it's not as nutritious as something else you can be getting, like eggs and bacon. Like eggs and bacon. Like so if you had a choice between the glazed donut and eggs and bacon, you would still choose as eggs and bacon. Yeah, because it's 250 calories compared to this 180, so it's 70 extra calories, but you're getting that high quality protein. That's right. And it's starting And you won't be hungry in an hour. Exactly. Absolutely. All right, coming up, do you really know what your kids are eating for lunch at school? Our teens take their cameras to the cafeteria. Oh my. How long has it been since I've been in a food cafeteria line at school? We'll be right back to go. One of the biggest challenges our overweight teens say they face is what to eat at the school cafeteria. Today was a school day and I had school lunch and it was corn dogs and crispy chicken in a bun. 
if you're walking through the lunch line, we have chicken tenders, chicken patties, chicken sticks, and corn dogs. Here we have bread and breadsticks. We have macaroni. We also have pizza. Only three out of 10 high school seniors report eating green vegetables during a typical day. Unhealthy vending machine snacks loaded with fats, sugars, salts, and calories are available in 82% of all middle schools and 97% of all high schools. Kids consume over 29 teaspoons of sugar a day. That ends up being 92 pounds of sugar a year. That is so shocking. It's stunning. You know, I went through all these schools and we would actually look at what these kids were eating. And you notice there's a lot of color in the food, but they're not natural colors, right? Those foods didn't come out of the ground looking that way. And the other thing is there's no fiber. So guess what? When you actually go and you talk to teachers about how the kids are doing, they say after they have lunch, they're comatose. Wow. They're in sugar coma. And by the way, because you have no fiber, you're constipated. That's no way to learn. <laughs> So David Zinzinko is the author of Eat This, Not That books. David says that the lunch your child eats is going to determine exactly what Dr. Oz was saying, their energy and alertness for the afternoon. So show us how to pack a lunch. And you were, you were an overweight kid. Yeah, I was. And I, and I, I, how I, overweight were you? I was about 30, 35 pounds. Pretty good um, now. Yeah, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. But that was the thing. I mean, we researched this book for two years. I've been editing a health magazine for 15 years and I was shocked by what we found in the food supply all of the hidden sugars and added fats and empty calories and that's one of the reasons I mean kids who are overweight are 15 times more likely to become overweight adults we've got to stop that and that's why we wrote the book and the good and good news is there's hope and the hope is information okay. and inspiration all right so let's talk about packing a lunch what Eat well, this, not that. Right, well, yeah. you want a nutritious lunch. You want to avoid that nap in a box that's going to kill you before the spelling bee. Right. Yes. So what you want to do is have a nutrient-dense lunch. You want to start off with a sturdy anchor of lean protein, healthy fats, good-for-you carbs. So something like this is a turkey with Swiss Yes. Uh, on whole wheat. Now, your kids will probably whine for a couple days about the whole wheat, but then they'll get over it and you'll have converted They're gonna whine because they've been eating white bread, is that yeah, it? Yeah, and they'll want that, they'll want, they'll want the sugar. But, but this is a very smart change because it goes back to the fiber point. You want, one other thing, by the way, it takes about 12 exposures to a taste for kids to finally say, you know what, I think that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't always say, hey, this is just like what you used to eat. Sometimes you gotta say, this is different. So don't compare them, just accept it as different. See if you like it separately. Yeah, I went from whole milk to 2% to now 1% to yeah. then skim. It's and then after a while, it's okay. Guys, fat yeah. especially is a learned habit. You're not, yes. there, there are no fat taste buds. Right, yeah. okay, here we go. Okay, so you have a side of pretzels. This is much better. <laughs> Kids love crunchy things. This is much better than chips. Adults uh, love crunchy things too. Yeah, <laughs> well, you can, here you go, here you go. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not doing okay. that. <laughs> and then we, uh, we, it, beverage, this is very important. We are, we are slurping up 450 calories a day. This is up, this is double what it was 30 years ago. You can make the single greatest change in your diet and lead to rapid weight loss if you focus on the beverage. Right. Yeah, not sodas. Correct. And, and a lot of the fruit juices and out there not, could, could be like sodas, have yeah, as much, yeah. cal as much so calories as sugar. So this is just a Tropicana fruit squeeze, only 20 calories. Right. Now, only the container has 40, uh -huh. um, but it's real fruit juice, and it's great for you. OK, lunch two. Yeah, same thing here. What you have, um, another high protein. Ham is a surprisingly lean cut, so this is very good. Cheese, Swiss cheese is great. It's very, very healthy. You want the apple slices, only 10% of kids get their daily so dose. If you have a of choice between and Swiss and cheddar, you should do Swiss? You should do Swiss. Okay. It's, it's lower in calories, sodium, and fat. Okay, good. Um, and then pair the, pair the apple with something like, I like this uh, for peanut butter snack. or caramel this. dip. It's really great. Okay, and Triscuits because fiber. Yes. The Triscuits bring fiber. And okay. then you want to treat like a Rice Krispie treat, it's 90 calories. You have to give your child something to brag about or barter with uh, uh, in the cafeteria. <laughs> this is great. Um, is this peanut butter? It is. And peanut, peanut butter, butter and, and jelly. And jelly. Okay. Yeah. So you could do peanut butter and jelly. Oh, you have to do peanut butter and jelly. When we come back, we're going to take another little healthy lunch quiz. We'll be right back. Great. More kids today will die from bad eating habits than they will from tobacco, drugs, and alcohol. Here's what you should know about making better choices when it comes to our children's diets. 
On average, children consume 450 calories a day from beverages alone. That's nearly twice as many as 30 years ago. Fruit juices average 120 calories a glass. Sodas average 150 calories a can. And shakes average a whopping 700 calories. Liquid calories are the easiest to cut. Limit the number of sodas and fruit drinks and drink more water. Portions have increased dramatically over the years. Since 1977, fast food hamburgers have increased by 97 calories and french fries by 68. At home, use smaller plates, bowls, and cups. Your kids will feel less deprived if their bowls are full. Having a structured mealtime creates healthier eating habits. Families who eat together three or four times a week have half the weight issues than families who eat together only once or twice a week. Okay, that's all fascinating information, that even eating together makes your family smaller. It's, it, but it also makes food sacred, Oprah, right? I mean, we're talking about calories and nutrient content and all, but at the end of the day, you celebrate over meals. That's why if you can find healthy options, we're that much better off. Okay, get out your Paget voting gadgets and let's take another food quiz, which is healthier. French fries or tater tots? French fries, let's see the results. A for French fries, B for tater tots. Okay, let's see it. What is it? You guys are wrong, it's the tater tots. It's <laughs> B. I actually You're talking B. about 150 calories versus 310. You're talking about half the fat and the reason is the tater tots go right out of the, the bag and into the oven. The fries, Go right into the fryer. Oh, tricked ya. <laughs> yeah. Right, so it's a tater tots, okay? So how many calories should these guys be having a day, Dr. Ross? Yeah, most of you about 1,800 to 2,000 calories a day. You're eating quite a bit more than that, but you're burning off a little bit of that because you're carrying extra weight around. But th that number 2,000 should not be exceeded for kids who are teenagers. And obviously a little bit less if you're younger. Okay, uh, uh, at Arby's, A, the roasted turkey and Swiss sandwich, or B, the roast beef smothered in cheddar melt? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of easy. The operative word is head fake. Yeah. yeah. No, the operative word is smothered. 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 Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, it's B. Yeah. What? It's the yeah. roast beef melt. Here's. What? I said, watch the hedge thing. Yeah. What did I say? This is why you need the information. <laughs> your weight is not your fault. This is 303 calories versus 708. There's over 350 calories in that bread alone, 14 grams of sugar in that bread alone. These are all the added hidden sugars that we're dealing with all the time. Didn't the we just tell them to have a turkey and Swiss sandwich for lunch? Right. We had a turkey yeah. and Swiss sandwich. Right, so what you have to do is you have to make sure you know exactly what's in it. If you're packing lunch at home, you're, you're, you got a light hand with the mayo, maybe you're adding mustard or the Swiss cheese, which is better than cheddar. Here, you're, you're eating out or you're grabbing something and you don't realize you know, what's going into the honey wheat bread. And anytime there's a, like a sugar synonym with the bread, like honey wheat, again, this is why the really smart it means choice. calories, honey plus wheat. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you gotta go to the back of the box, you gotta go to the nutrition label, and you've gotta yeah. look at I the I would facts. never have thought that anything with the word smothered <laughs> in it <laughs> would be the choice to make. Okay, last one, Pizza Hut, <laughs> A. The thin and crispy quartered ham and pineapple pizza, or B, the thin and crispy cheese pizza. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so confused anymore, I'm just guessing. Okay. You're Everybody's hungry. confused. This okay. is the problem. Every answer I think I've got wrong. <laughs> oh, God. It's okay, a, a, our audience said it was uh, thin and crispy cheese. Okay, the answer is... This is one is... of the most fascinating things we found in the book. It's counterintuitive. It is actually A. And, yeah. the reason, and the reason is the pineapple and the ham, which is a very lean meat. It's better than pepperoni and sausage. Pineapple and the ham are displacing cheese with healthy options. And that's the interesting thing. If you bring healthy toppings in, you can displace the cheese, and now you've gotten protein, fiber, fruit, and, you've, and it's better for you than simple cheese pizza. Okay. That's why the book is Eat This, Not That. <laughs> David Zinzinko's Eat This, Not That books are in bookstores everywhere. It's a great guide to carry around and have with you whenever you're not sure what to choose. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back.
A third of all children 12 to 19 years old in the United States are unfit. A typical American child spends four to five hours a day watching TV, using the computer, or playing video games. What's one of your favorite pastimes? Besides eating? <laughs> Besides eating. Playing video games? About 30% of all teens could not pass a standard fitness test for cardio, health, strength, and endurance. So now I'm getting ready to go to gym. And I really hate gym. And we're doing fitness testing, and I am not fit, so I am not excited. Down, up, down, up. I hate gym with a burning passion. We're supposed to be jogging right now, but I'm not going to jog because I hate jogging. I'm going to bob my eyes out. I'm going to go for a walk today, which I don't usually do, but my dad is making me. You like walking? No, I'm really. I wheeze a lot when I walk. Make you tired? Yes. What bothers you when you walk? That bothers me that I'm out of breath and I sweat up too much. Even for the littlest thing. Yeah. I'm out of breath already. It's only been 10 minutes. But walking is the best exercise. The number one most important bit of advice I can give you is to walk. Because you don't get hurt doing it. You build up a little bit of, of reliance on yourself and some self-esteem. And this is the present I want to give you. It doesn't look like much. These things cost you know, a dollar or two, more, maybe. And it's a pedometer. And you might say, why am I giving you a pedometer? Well, what we've learned is it's one of the best ways for kids to give themselves feedback. So you can do cool things. Like, for example, you can give them to a class and have them race another class. So they can count up all their steps together. You can go explore in your neighborhood. You can find nature trails. Don't make it exercise. Make it cool and fun and hip and edgy and go out and play with it, but then keep track. I bet you most of you are walking two to 3,000 steps a day. If you can just double that as a start by walking for an extra half hour a day, it makes a huge difference. And when you're walking, you're always using calories. You can walk all day long. We're designed to be able to do that. We'll be right back. Yes, ma'am. Hi. One of my um, comments is um, Josh is my son and I struggle with my weight also. But um, sometimes we can't afford to like buy the Swiss cheese versus the cheddar. And it comes down to a financial choice, not a the healthy choice. First of all, if you're on food stamps, then you're absolutely right. Because the best way to gain weight in America is go on food stamps. It's been done. People within a week or two are going on food stamps because the easiest thing is to buy are the cheapest nutrient foods. Yeah. They'll put weight on. But for most Americans, if you start being a little shrewder about how you shop, instead of paying for boxes, buy stuff in bulk. Go to farmer's markets. Eat local, which is, by the way, better in many ways for us anyway, but especially because generally the prices are a little bit lower. Uh, and if you can find those sources of food, you can actually change your diet. It's also, it's really, it, it, it is a, uh, it's a paradigm shift that the whole family has to make. You know, it's not just about, you know, going on a diet for a period of time. It's the shift that the family has to make, just, just uh, what Dr. Oz was showing, families eating together, uh, that you're going to tackle this as an issue that the whole family is dealing with and the whole family is going to shift to eating healthy and it's not just Josh or it's not just you, it's everybody in the family is going to eat healthy. And that becomes a priority. And so maybe there are less videos or video games in the house so that you can have fresher vegetables. You know, it's just, it's a shift in the way you think about your priorities and the way you think about how you're going to live. Okay, somebody had a question here about gastric bypass. Was it you, Jillian? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been overweight my entire life, and I can't remember a time when I haven't been. And a lot of people in my family have gotten it, and I was just wondering, is that something that I should look into? Uh, you should look into it, and guess what? I'll promise I'll even help you. But with two, two rules, two preconditions. <laughs> the first is that you got to take some of the knowledge that David and I and Oprah shared with you today and apply it to your life. And the second thing, you've got to feed the real hunger in your life. And that's not about food. You deal with those two issues and you're still heavy, I think the gastric bypass surgery or banding more likely for a child does make sense. We can put you in one of the big trials that are being done nationally on this. Uh, and, and, I, and I think that it's going to make a big difference for a lot of folks who are heavy because if you're carrying around a lot of weight, your life expectancy is similar to that by the time you're age 50 as if you had cancer. 
So this is not a small difference. We would operate on cancer. So that's the reason I can defend operating on folks uh, who have appetite issues. All right, you wanted to say? Two things. This is not a wind sprint, it's a marathon. So make sure you're on a long-term plan. And the other thing I want you to do is to love yourselves as much as we love you. Because when you look at that show, and I look out here at the audience, I see the same thing. People care about you. People care about all the kids, because you're us. You're, you're our responsibility. Let us help you, feel the love that we have for you. But if you don't love yourself, it's not gonna make a difference. Because that's the ultimate hunger that you gotta feed. Thanks, Dr. Oz. Thanks to all of our teams again, and to your families, thank you. Bye, everybody.